and send the Holy Ghost to me. I love Jesus, I love Jesus of Galilee. I love Jesus, I love Jesus of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins. I send the Holy Ghost to me. I love Jesus. I love Jesus of Galilee. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All the children out there shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I welcome you once again. My name is Banke Oyebade. And today, the topic I'm presenting is Raising Heavenly Bound Children. Amen. Raising Heavenly Bound Children. Come, Father. Come and take your place. The King of Glory, Lord God Almighty, the strength of my life, my joy, my peace. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who's mighty, the one who's Glorious, the one who is majestic in his ways, the one who is more awesome than the most awesome, the one who is more powerful than the most powerful. Father, I welcome you, God, to come and take charge of this message. I welcome you to come and have your place. I welcome you to come and do, oh God, the incredible that only you can do. Father, come and take charge. Almighty God, come and take charge. Jesus, the Lord of the universe, the King of glory, the Lord God Almighty, the strength of our life, our joy, our peace, the Bishop of our soul, our soon coming King. Come, Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, I need you more than ever. Only you can help me. I have no words of my own, except those you put in my words. Put words in my mouth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus. I come against every part of darkness that wants to hinder the children from receiving these words in the name of Jesus. I come against every part of darkness, O oh God, in the heart of the children that is causing them to be stubborn, that is causing them, O oh God, to deviate from the laws of God. I bind and cast you out in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of darkness over these children. And even over the teachers and their parents, every spirit that is not of God, in these children, in their parents, in their teachers, in their words, I bind and cast you out in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, breathe upon those children. Give them a new heart, a heart of flesh, a heart that loves God, a heart that pants after God, a heart that is passionate for God. Father, in the name of Jesus, grant the teachers, the parents, the words, the grace to truly teach their children and to raise children who will make heaven. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, take charge. I cover myself, the cameraman, the cameras and everything, this whole environment and even every place, oh God, where they are hearing me in this whole wide world, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. Lord, release your warring angels even as this message goes on. Let healing, so oh God, be done in the lives of the children, the parents, the teachers. Let healing even begin, even as my word goes on. Let there be miracles. Let there be changes. Let yokes be broken. Let the darkness, oh God, in the lives of this one disappear. Let every, every captive, oh God, be released in the name of Jesus. I speak to you, Satan. Release those children now in the name of Jesus. Thus says the Lord. Lose them and let them go. For the Lord has need of them. In Jesus name. Come and take your place. Oh Lord. Come and take your place. Oh Lord. In Come and take your place in their lives. Come and take your place. Praise the Lord. 
I welcome you once again. Like I said, my name is Banke Oyebade and I'm teaching on raising heavenly bound children. Praise the Lord. Quickly let us look at Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. I'm reading from verse 4 to 9. Deuteronomy 6, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And this word which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Riseth up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head, hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Verse 12. Then, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, this is the commandment of the Lord our God. The Lord has commanded him that we should love him. The Lord has commanded that we should teach the children our ways. I think it's time I begin to talk directly to the children. Amen. Because this message is more for the children. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this message, I don't want to repeat a lot of revelations. Please, if you don't have those videos, I beg of you in the name of Jesus, get them. One, um, um, monitoring your children to heaven. Monitoring your children to heaven. Then two, warning from God to parents and children. And do you really love me? Do you really love me? I also want to recommend um, Gateways to Hell and um, God is Watching. God is Watching is a drama. Please, these videos, and as, as well as Satanic Initiation, please, if you don't have these videos, get them. I actually have about over 30 videos on the end times. But at least these ones that I've mentioned, please get them for your children if you don't have them. Amen. I repeat, monitoring your children to heaven, warning from God to parents and children. Um, do you really love me? Do you really love me is the mind of Christ, the pain of Christ brought to light. God is watching, is a drama on, the, on judgment. But the anointing of God is so awesome on that video. And after the drama itself, I prayed with people and they found themselves in heaven and gave testimonies of their encounters with God. So you need that. It, it's a good, it will be a good impartation for, you, for the children. And then satanic initiation going on all over the world. You also need to know about them. And then gateways to hell. Please, if you can get those videos for the children, at least to start with. I still have others, but at least start with those ones. Praise the Lord. So, in those ones, I also talked about most of these revelations of children left behind after the rapture, which, because of time, I'm not going to be able to repeat all that again in this, uh, 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 um, this session, because there's too much I need to say. I don't even know how I'm going to run through all this. Okay? So, please, I have a, a lot of revelations of children left behind. But basically, I want to let you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is crying seriously because... There are too many strategies the devil has laid down for children to take them to hell. And these strategies have actually worked. By revelation, I, 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 I come to understand that millions of children are already in hell because of those strategies. And some of them is not exactly those strategies, but other issues we are, we are going to talk about here. Okay? Now, the issues we are going to talk about here, they are so important because if your children don't have those things, there is no guarantee of heaven for them. And the Lord desperately wants all his children back home in heaven. The Lord doesn't want any of the children to end up in hell. Children, are you hearing me? 
The Lord does not want you to end up in hell. The Lord desperately wants to save you. Amen? The Lord desperately wants to save you. He wants to give you the best that you can ever imagine. I don't know. I've talked about heaven in the previous videos. Heaven is the most beautiful place. There's nothing... I mean, there's no, no way you can compare heaven to, to anything on this earth. It's the most beautiful place beyond your imagination. Children, you must make heaven. Heaven is beautiful. It's, the, it's a place where the streets are made of gold. Everything you want is in heaven. So make sure you get there. But how do you get there? That is the reason why I want to talk about raising children he raising heavenly bound children what does it mean to raise to raise means to bring up amen heavenly of course is talking about children that are fit for heaven and bound means it's like ch uh, children who are fit to be in heaven amen praise the lord so raising heavenly bound children what if you're going to raise heavenly bound children then it is important for parents to teach you know the children this number one teach them to to put god first teach them to put god first teachers and parents are you hearing me teach your children to put god first children the bible says we should love god first put god first before you do anything it must be god first when you wake up in the morning the first person you talk to before you talk to, before you greet your parents it's God you first talk to. Don't, when you wake up in the morning, before you speak to your parents, speak to God first. Before you greet anybody, greet God first. Before you do anything, ask God. Tell God, God, I want to do this, I want to do that. That is how to put God first. Amen? Praise the Lord. Then put the kingdom of God first. That is number two. Put the kingdom of God first. In other words, whatever you are doing in life, Children, are you, are you listening to me? Whatever you are doing, the life in, in, doing in life, you put the kingdom of God first, not second. Everything that you are doing should be in line with the kingdom of God. In other words, in line with the doctrines of God, in line with the commandments of God, in line with the word of God. Do you understand, children? Praise the Lord. Now, children, I also want you to read the Bible always. That's number three. And teachers and parents, teach your children to read the Bible always. Amen? Number four, teach them to pray always. Teach them to always pray. Number five, teach them to always worship. It, should be not, I, it shouldn't be I worship today, then I'm not worshiping tomorrow. No, teach them to at least minimum of three times in a day. Teach them to worship and pray. Praise the Lord. Then teach them to fear God. Teach them to fear God. It's a different thing, you know, to love God. It's also a different thing to fear God. And children, you must not be afraid of anybody. The only person you fear in life is God. And fear too is not good. Children, do you understand me? It's not good for you to fear people. The only person you should be afraid of is God. Don't be afraid of men. The, the only thing you should do is to respect men, but not fear them. God doesn't want you to be afraid of men. God wants you to only fear him. Please, I, I'm sure I, I've made myself clear on this because I have so much else to say. Please, I also want to talk to the teach, um, teachers. Teach them about the person of Jesus. Teach them about the person called Jesus. Now, children, Jesus is the second person in the Trinity. There are three in one God. Three, we have three in one God. God the Father, God the Son, called Jesus, who is the Son of God, and then God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Please, parents, teach your children to know that Jesus, without Jesus, no prayers can, there is no prayers that God will hear. There is nothing you can do in life without Jesus. Jesus Christ is the only way. Praise the Lord. Then also teach them about the Holy Spirit, who is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is the third person. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things in John, the book of John. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. So children learn to be friends with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one person that you need in every area of your life. When you're doing your exam, 
I think I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit some other time, so let me just leave this. Amen? But children, learn to call the Holy Spirit in everything you do. You are going out in a place where you don't know, say, Holy Spirit, accompany me. Jesus, go with me. You want to write your exam, say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to write this exam. Praise the Lord. Everything you need in life, tell the Holy Spirit to help you and to do for you or to teach you. Praise the Lord. Also, teach them about judgment. Teach, sorry, let's start with, teach them about the rapture, that there is a rapture day that is coming. What does rapture mean? Rapture means to be caught up. The word rapture itself is not in the Bible. What is in the Bible is caught up. In the book of Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, we find that in Thess Thessalonians chapter 4 and th ch uh, 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 um, chapter 5. Let me quickly read that. Amen. Let me quickly read that. There is a rapture that is coming. We are Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ will be seen in the air. Praise the Lord. The rapture is when Jesus Christ will come in the heavens. You are going to see him in the heavens. He's going to appear in the heavens. And all the those who are truly born again will go up to heaven, will fly up. They will be, the, 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 Lord, the Lord will give them the grace, the power to fly up into heaven. Or the angels of God will pick them into heaven to meet with Jesus Christ in the air. That is what they call the rapture. Amen. It is the time Jesus Christ will appear in the air and all those of us who are qualified. That is why you too must be qualified. You too must be ready. And that is the reason why I'm teaching about raising up heavenly bound children. Children who will be rapturable. Amen. Children who will make heaven. If you are not born again, you cannot make heaven. Do, you, do I make myself clear? If you are not born again, you cannot make heaven. What does it mean to be born again? It means to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. To serve God, serve Jesus Christ, serve the Holy Spirit, and to always pray to them. Amen? It means to live for God, to do the things that are pleasing to God. Anything that God doesn't want, you don't do it. Praise the Lord. That is what it means to be what? Born again. Praise the Lord. It means to always love God, to always pray, pray to God. That's what it means to be what? Born again. To accept everything that the Bible says. Praise the Lord. Now, quickly I want to read um, 1 Thessalonians 4. I'm talking about the rapture. Amen. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4. I'm reading for, from 14. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise up first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with this word. So the Bible is saying here that Jesus Christ is going to appear. I'm talking about the rapture, remember? Jesus Christ is going to appear in the clouds. There are first, first, there is going to be a shout of the trumpets, or Jesus Christ himself is going to give a shout, and then there is going to the trumpet will be blown by an angel and immediately that trumpet is blown all the good Christians all the born again Christians who have died that is the first thing that will happen all the dead Christians who are truly born again those who are good those who don't fight, who don't cause, who don't sin they are going to rise up from the grave they will rise up from the grave and they will fly into the air that God will give them the power to fly into the air. That's, that's the first thing that will happen at the rapture. Then those of us, you and I, who are still alive, the, the next thing that will happen, every one of us, 
who don't have a sin, mind you, if you have a sin in your, in your life, you will not be able to make that rapture. Immediately, every one of us who are in Christ, who love Jesus, who are born again, that are still alive, every one of us, the Lord will give us grace and wings to fly up to meet the Lord in the sky. Not really wings, not that he's going to give us wings, but the grace to fly up and meet the Lord in the air. Okay? That is what they call the rapture. So children, it's very important that you make yourself ready for the rapture. If there is one single sin in your life, there is no rapture. So at this moment, I want you to quickly say this prayer. Say, Father, forgive me, have mercy on me, wash me with the blood of Jesus. Father, please, in every way I have sinned against you, forgive me. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Father, help me to make the rapture. Jesus, when you come in the air, when you appear in the air, please don't leave me in this world. Take me with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, teachers, the next thing you need to teach the children is about the judgment day. Amen? Let them know there is a judgment that is coming. Children, you must know about this judgment. Every man, everyone will be judged for what he has done. That is why it's important for you to always ask God for forgiveness. Now, if you, if you ask God for forgiveness every day, there is no how you will be caught in this judgment. You will not be judged. But if you are one of those who, who keep sinning, you, if you sin and you do not ask God for judgment, for, uh, for, 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 for forgiveness of sin, then I pray it won't be you. Whoever does not ask for forgiveness of sin will come before judgment. What's, what's, what is judgment day like? Judgment day is a day when Jesus Christ will sit as the judge of the whole world. And everybody will line up, everybody in this world, can you imagine, the whole world, even those who have died, they will be brought up, amen, they will be brought up to stand in a line, in a queue, everybody will take their judgment one by one. In that, on that judgment day, they will show the films of everything you have done from the day you were born down, down to the, the day a man dies. They will show the film of a man from the day he was born down to the day to the last day he was he died. They will show every secret. There is no secret. Even if even if the person does uh, does that sin under the earth, they will show every secret. There will be films. Let me tell you something, children. Everything you have been in life, don't say nobody is seeing me. God is seeing you. Angels are there. They are taking things. That is why some of you, when somebody is preaching, some of you will be making noise. It's very dangerous. Some of you will be laughing. You will join your mates to be laughing. Stop doing that nonsense. Stop joining those wrong people to do that thing. Because angels are taking things. They are taking, they are, they are taking shots of everything that you are doing. And they will, on judgment day, everything, those things will come up. So there will be no, it's a lie. I didn't do it. No, no, everything will be shown. You can't say it's a lie because they will show it. So everybody will now be rewarded for their sins. And of course, anybody who comes, who, who appear in front of Jesus, the judge, on judgment day, every one of them is going to hell fire. In fact, the lake of fire. When a person dies, the person goes to hell fire. When a, 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 sorry, when a bad person or a sinner dies, the person goes to hell fire. Any child that knows the difference between good and evil, if that child should die, even if that child is four years old, that child is going to hell. It will not be you in Jesus' name. So it's very important that you learn to ask God to forgive you every day. Every day I always say, God, God, for my lies, I ask you to forgive me in Jesus' name. For beating so and so, I ask you to forgive me in Jesus' name. For doing this bad thing, I ask. Always make sure, count your sins to God. Amen? When you wake up every day, in fact, if possible, do it seven times a day. Ask God for forgiveness of sins. Okay? Learn to make it a habit. Do it every day. Always ask God for forgiveness of sins. So, anybody who is a sinner or a bad person, when the person dies, whether he's a four-year-old child that knows good and evil, that child or that person will end up in hellfire. 
Now on judgment day, even those in hellfire will be brought out from hell. And they will now be brought before Jesus Christ, who will be the judge of the whole earth. They will be lined up for the final judgment. Can you imagine? They've been in hellfire. Now they are lined up again for the second and final judgment. And this final judgment, again, they will now be cast into what? The lake of fire. The lake of fire is different from hellfire. Hellfire is the beginning, is, is the beginning of punishment. Why the lake of fire is another far bigger thing. Is is it, it, somebody said hell hellfire is hundred times bigger than this whole world put together. Now can you imagine if hellfire is hundred times bigger than this whole world? That means the lake of fire may be a thousand times bigger than this whole earth. I don't know, but certainly it must be bigger. But I know the punishment is more terrible. Amen. Now you may say, yeah, is that in the Bible? So let me quickly let's quickly look at Revelation 20, and I'm reading from 10. The Bible says in Revelation 20, verse 10, I'm reading 10 to the end. It says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beasts and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the death, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So we see here, the Bible uh, uh, gave the account that Satan was cast into what? The lake of fire. Satan will be cast into the lake of fire because it's judgment day. For all the evils he's been doing, he's going to the lake of fire. Already, as at this point in which the judgment would um, be happening, there is what they call the Antichrist or the beast. As, 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 as at the point of this judgment day, he, that one, will already be in hell, hell. So he will be cast into the lake of fire too. The first prophets will also be cast into the lake of fire. Then all those who have died, all the sinners who have died, who are in hell, will be brought out of hell and cast again into the lake of fire. Then all those who are alive, doing evil things, all the sinners that are alive, anybody that has not given his life to Christ, Anybody that says that Jesus Christ is not Lord. Anybody that says that he does not believe in Jesus Christ. Anybody who says, I'm good, that's all that matters. I don't need Jesus. All of them, all who are doing evil things, who are doing sins, who are lying, who are stealing, cheating, fighting, and all those evil things, they'll be cast into the lake of fire. So you don't want to be there. So please, give your life to, to Jesus and be a good child. Obey the Lord of God. Praise the Lord. Quickly, let me run down. Let me run with some. So what else do we need to teach our children? We also need to teach our children to evangelize. Children learn to evangelize. Learn to preach the word of God. It's very important. Don't say, I'm too small. Amen? If all you can say is, Jesus loves you, give your life to Christ, he's coming back again. Then you pray with them and say, Jesus, come into their hearts. Forgive them their sins. Father, have mercy upon them in Jesus' name. If that's all, you have done a great work. You have evangelized. You don't need too much grammar. You don't need too much scriptures. Praise the Lord. Then, please, parents and teachers, teach your children to be focused on God. Let let be focused on God. Amen. Be focused on God. Let all your concentration be on God. Don't be diverted. Don't let people divert you away from God. Don't let the world take you away from God. It's very, very important. Also, learn to be focused on God's purpose for your life. Amen. 
Children, you must find out what, what is God's purpose for your life. Some of, when we are talking about purpose, we are talking about what God has called you to be in this world. Every man has been called to do something in this world. You did not just drop from heaven for nothing. You didn't come to this world for nothing. You have an assignment to do. That's why the Lord brought you in this world. So maybe your own is to come and preach the word. Maybe somebody else is to come and be the doctor, to be a doctor. Maybe your own is to come and be a businessman. And when you are a businessman, it also means that you will be financing the work of God. You are going to be giving to the church or giving to missionaries or giving to people like us so that we can also spread the word of God. Any businessman that is not giving to the work of God will not make heaven. Do I make myself clear, children? Praise the Lord. So learn to be focused on what God. If God has called you to be maybe a preacher, stay put as a preacher. Don't say, I want to go and join a football club. If you know God has called you to be a preacher, you have no business joining any football club. If God has called you to be a doctor, you have no business um, going to, what, what do I say now? Going to maybe um, uh, uh, do pure water business. You know, say, ah, everybody's making a lot of, they're making millions in pure water business. Let me run to, no. God called you to be a doctor, not to be a pure, pure water maker. Amen? Learn to be focused. Stay in the, in the calling where God has called you. Amen? Avoid people who take you away from the purpose of God. Avoid people who will take you away from God. Avoid people who will take you away from the purpose of why God called you. Avoid people, cut away anybody who is distracting you. You will find some friends, some friends will be saying, eh, eh, come, let's go to disco, disco houses. You know God, that is not God's assignment for your life. You know God doesn't want you there. So please cut off all those bad friends. Praise the Lord. Then, um, Teach them to encourage themselves in the Lord like David. Amen? Parents, teach your children to encourage themselves in the Lord. Children, anytime things are not happening the way you want it, anytime things are not going the way you want it, even when you fail, encourage yourself in the Lord. Say, I can make it. I know I can make it. I know God will help me. I know God will strengthen me. Don't give up. Never give up. Amen. Never give up. Don't say, oh, because I failed. I failed uh, three times. I failed four times. I will never make it. It's a lie. Even if you have failed five, six times, you can still stand up again. Amen. Praise the Lord. And please, parents and children, let them know that with God, all things are possible. There is nothing impossible if you don't have brain. Tell God, God, give me brain. Make me wise. Make me the uh, uh, best doctor in the world. Oh God, make me the best preacher in the world. Oh God, give me, help me to know how to preach the word. There is nothing God will not do for you. And that's why I said it's very important that you also become a friend of the Holy Spirit. Make the Holy Spirit your best friend. Make Jesus your best friend. Amen. Make God your father in every situation of life. Always learn anything, any issues you are going through in life. Always talk to God. In the morning, talk to God. In the afternoon, talk to God. In the night, talk to God. When you are having issues with your exam, say, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me in this exam. I don't understand this thing. I don't understand this question. Holy Spirit, remind me. And it always works. He always does it perfectly. Even sometimes, for instance, I'm looking for something. Maybe I've scattered the whole house looking for something. And then all of a sudden I'll remember, oh, why don't I ask the Holy Spirit? Immediately I ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, where did I put that thing? Immediately, the Holy Spirit will just help you to find it. So always learn, you know, to make the Holy Spirit your friend. Praise the Lord. Parents and teachers, teach your children to work for God. Teach them to work for God. Even as little as they are. Well, they may not be able to do a lot of things that the adults are doing, but even, even when they are small, around the church compound, they can learn to sweep, pick, clean up the chairs and things like that. Teach them to work for God. Teach them to be humble. Teach them. Children, you must not be prideful. God hates people who are proud. You know, some people, they'll say, I don't talk to this kind of girl. I don't talk to this kind of boy. Don't do that. God doesn't like that. God hates people who are proud. Amen? Be humble. Be, I, I mean, don't despise anybody. Don't put down anybody. God doesn't like that. Amen. Also, teach 
your children to, to love and not to hate people. Teach them to love people and not hate people. Some people say, I hate, I hate this boy. I hate this girl. That's, that's, don't, that's, that, that kind of thing can put a person in hellfire. That kind of thing can send a person to hellfire. Don't do that. Anytime you, you feel like you hate somebody in your, in your, in your, in your, in your mind, buy and cast out that spirit of, of hate. Hate is a demon. It's an evil spirit. So if you hate somebody, say in the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of hate. Hate, get out of me in Jesus' name. And it will go. Praise the Lord. Teach them to respect people and to honor the elders. Teach, teach your children to respect people and to honor the elders. Children, it's very important that you learn to respect people. Even children who are juniors to you. Children who are not up to you in age. Respect them. And the elders, honor the elders. Some of you, in the buses, you see elderly old people standing, maybe in uh, all this uh, BRT or um, what do they call them? Big buses. You see them standing and you are sitting down. Stand up. Stand up for them. Let them sit. Tell them, Mommy, Daddy, come and sit. Praise the Lord. Learn to respect them. Amen. Honor the elders. Praise the Lord. Then, parents and teachers, teach your children to honor the Sabbath. Children, what is the Sabbath? The Sabbath is the day a person puts aside. Many people, Sunday is their Sabbath. But in some countries, Sunday is not the Sabbath. Whereas some people say Saturday is their own Sabbath day. The day, they, the go, the day you set apart for God is what they call the Sabbath day. Or the day you go, uh, you spend more time in church. Amen? So for some people it's Saturday. Whether it is Saturday or Sunday, choose a day for your Sabbath. Some people, because of the uh, different laws in different nations, some people it may be on a Monday or a Tuesday, whatever day you choose. Please, there must be one day Call the Sabbath day in your life. Out of seven days, you must put one day down as a Sabbath day. On a Sabbath day, you, mu you must honor the Sabbath day. How do you honor the Sabbath day? By Sabbath day. By making sure that you go to church to worship God. The Bible says you must not forsake the assemblies of your brethren. Like now, we have a lot of false cults and false um, fellowships and false churches coming up now saying that you should not go to church. That is a sin. And that kind of sin can take a man to hell. You must have a day you go to worship God. A day when it's all about God. Whatever you are doing, it's all about God. When you are buying, you buy things, maybe like uh, Bibles or notebooks that you want to use to write notes on the teachings of God. Or you are buying a Bible that you want to use to write, you know, take down notes about the teachings of God. Or you are buying CDs. And Christian books, it is not a day that you buy nonsense. Maybe you, you now say you are going to the market. Uh -uh, not on a Sabbath day. You don't go to the market on a Sabbath day. You don't go shopping on a Sabbath day. You don't go and play football. In fact, I've said it, football, not for Christians. You don't go to play table tennis on Sabbath day. Anything you are doing on that Sabbath day must be things that is connected to God. You don't go visiting your friends just for the sake of, um, I want to go and visit my friend. No, if you are going to visit your friend, you must also share the word of God with them. So that makes it, that brings God into, what, what I'm trying to say is you must bring God into whatever you are doing on that day. Everything must be connected to God. If you know you are going to visit friends, visit them because you want to share with them or visit them with the mind that after visiting them, I'm going to, I'm going to share the word with them, I'm going to pray with them. Those are the kind of things God expects. So honor the Sabbath. Amen. And also the Sabbath day is also a day when you rest. God wants us to rest. It's very important. On the Sabbath day is a day you worship God. Is a day you rest. Uh, 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 rest. Sleep. God wants you to sleep. Because your body needs rest and sleep too. Amen. And then it's a day you spend more time with God. Even at home. Praise the Lord. Now, also teach them to keep their virginity. Amen? Teach them to keep their virginity. These things are very, very important. What does it mean to keep their virginity? Children, to keep your virginity means 
that you preserve yourself from sex. You say no to sex till the day you are married. You don't have anything to do with any. If you're a girl, you don't have anything to do with any boy until you are married. If you're a boy, you don't you don't sleep with any girl until you are married. That is what it means to keep your virginity. To keep your virginity also means to stay away from kissing, rubbing bodies with you know the opposite sex. Praise the Lord. Very very important. Now, oftentimes you hear people who who tell you this lie that ah, if you don't have sex, eh. Uh, 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 I don't know whether your I don't know something will something negative will happen to your body. It's a lie. It's a big lie. They will tell you, ah, you must sleep with a man. No, if you don't sleep with a man, uh, this one will not happen. That one is a lie. These are demonic people. These are agents of Satan. Don't listen to them. Amen. So please teach them the value of virginity. Tell them no kissing or romancing, it's all part of sex. Tell them not to enter into, into marital or, um, sorry, into marital or sexual bonds. You know, some people now, they will say, do you love me? He say, I love you. And then because of that, it's okay, let us, if you know you love me, let us cut, let us uh, uh, lick each, each other's blood. They will now cut their skin. Blood will come out, and then you'll be licking somebody's blood. When you lick somebody's blood, you drink somebody's blood, you're already a witch, and no witch will go to heaven. A child of God must not make bound. Don't when you are when, when you are very young, don't promise anybody that I will marry you. And by the way, don't let anybody be calling you my wife, my husband, when you're a small girl or a small boy. Do you hear me? Children, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anybody be calling you my husband, my wife. Because many people, let me tell you, those evil people, when they, have, they see small children, they'll begin to call them my wife. If he is not taken, I know one, one, one very beautiful lady. It was an old man, an old man that is old enough to be her father that eventually married her. Because that man started calling her my wife when she was when she was born, the day she was, she, was, she was giving birth to, the man was there, and the man called her my wife. Parents, if you, any man, anyone is calling your children, my wife, my husband, please tell them quietly and nicely, please don't do that, sir. Don't do that, ma'am. God doesn't like it. She's, and make that straight uh, 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 declaration. In Jesus' name, she's not your wife. In Jesus' name, he's not your husband. Make that break. Because words are powerful. Through the words they've spoken, those children can be bound for life. Sometimes some of these people who say those things are not real human beings. Some of them are spirit husband and spirit wife. They will just come like human beings. And if care is not taken, eventually those children, when those children get, uh, uh, get grown up, they will be bound to these people. Or bound to the spirit, husband or spirit wife. So please say no to anybody calling you my wife, my husband. When you are grown up, you are more than at least 20, 21, and hey, then you can decide whoever you want to marry. Praise the Lord. Tell them not to enter into marital or sexual bounds, bond, or swear or make promise. To avoid anyone, sorry, to to avoid making promise to anyone for now. Let them know the dangers of blood oaths. Let them know the dangers of blood oaths. It's very very bad. Praise the Lord. Now teach them to quietly reject. Teach them to quietly and lovingly reject and correct evil. Children, when you see anybody doing evil things around you, just go to the person, or even from the distance, wherever you are, say to the person, please auntie, please my dear brother, please my dear sister, don't beat this boy again, please don't do this evil thing again, it's not good, God doesn't like it, do you understand me children, quietly, lovingly correct people when you see them doing evil around you, or 
we just move away from wherever they are doing evil. Praise the Lord. Now, teach them to disassociate themselves from ungodly friends or relations or relationships. Any ungodly child, any ungodly friends, please, children, disassociate yourself. Cut off from every ungodly friend. Stay away from every ungodly friends. Any relationship, maybe you are somebody's girlfriend or you are somebody's boyfriend. Go and tell the person, I'm sorry. I realize that if I'm doing this girlfriend thing, this boyfriend thing, I'll end up in hell. So please, from now, I am no longer your girlfriend. Please, from now, I'm no longer your boyfriend. This relationship is over in the name of Jesus. Put in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let them know it is because God doesn't like this. Praise the Lord. Teach them to be builders and not destroyers. Some children, they love to destroy. Some children, once they get, they get the, you know, their parents rebuke them. They, they may carry the TV and break it or break whatever is around them. That is a very wrong spirit. That shows that there is a demon in that child. Any child that is carrying things and destroying them is what? Demonized. You need to go and pray and cast out the demon in that child. Some children are as old as, 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 as some children as young as two years old. They also do that. It's because of the films. Some of them have been watching. Demons are released into the air through a lot of demonic films, demonic music, and other things too. Amen? So you need to find out why that child is doing that. And most importantly, take out that child for deliverance. Praise the Lord. And children, apart from that, please be a builder, not a destroyer. Some of you, how, for, let, me, let me give an example. Some people, they will say to somebody, See your head like coconut head. That is destroying. You are destroying somebody. Amen. Remember that that child, that person you are calling coconut head, is God's child. So when you say, see your head like coconut head, you are actually abusing God. You are not abusing that child only. You are abusing that child and you are also abusing God. You are saying God made a child with coconut head. That is the meaning of what you are saying. So please don't do that. Don't cause, don't, don't. May some of you, you see. You see maybe somebody who does not have leg and you are going to tell the person, see, stupid you, you can't walk. That's a sin. Don't do that. Because if you say such, such a thing, you may end up in Jesus' name. It's not be you. If a person goes, if a child goes to tell another person, you are blind. If care is not taken, that child may end up being blind. Or goes to tell somebody, see, you this stupid man, you don't have leg. If that child is not careful, that child will do what? Will end up what? Not having legs. Do you remember the story about um, Elijah? You know what Elijah did to the children who abused him? They said, uh, old man, bald head, bald head, bald head. They were calling uh, Elijah, Gorima Pahed, Gorima Pahed, a, 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 a man with bald head. And you know what Elijah did? He called forth an animal to swallow all the children, to eat up all the children. Please be very careful. That was instant judgment that happened to those children. It wouldn't be your portion in Jesus' name. So please be a builder, not a destroyer. Stop destroying people. When you when you tell them bad things, you are destroying them. But how do you build? Oh, tell them you are a, you are a good you are a good boy. You are a good girl. You are a great boy. You know you you, you know you are a good person. That is how to build. That's how to build a person. When you begin to tell somebody good things, you are building up the person. Teach them to forgive. Parents and teachers, teach your children to forgive in advance. Even when the person has not done anything, what does it mean to teach to, to forgive in advance? Even when the person has not done anything to you, forgive the person. Have a heart that, have a heart that if this person offends me, I will forgive. That's what it means to forgive in advance. Have the mind that if this person does anything wrong, I will forgive. Amen. Always learn. If you find it difficult, if you are pain in your heart about this thing that this person has done, go to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, remove the spirit of unforgiveness in my heart. Remove this bitterness. Remove, oh God, everything that is not of you in my heart in Jesus' name. Because let me tell you, children, once you have that children, a spirit of unforgiveness, evil spirits will start coming in. So you don't want to end up in hell, so stop it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
and teach them to be contented. Teach your children contentment. Teach them to be satisfied with whatever they have. Oh, you have this uh, clothes of uh, 500 naira. That's all your mother and your father can afford. Say thank you to mommy and daddy for even that 500 naira clothes they bought. Don't go and tell mommy and daddy. See, mommy, 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 from Lyo, but but their children a, 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 a dress of five seven thousand. You, mommy, you are buying me a, 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 a dress of five hundred naira. Are you not ashamed? That is sin. Be contented with whatever they give to you. When mommy or, or anybody gives you something, you say thank you, and always learn to say thank you. What you do is. First, thank you to God, then thank you to the person. You say, Father, thank you for this gift. And then you say to the person, thank you, God bless you. Amen? Don't be comparing yourself. When mommy and daddy has, have enough money, they will buy you something else that is better than what you have now. But in the meantime, learn to appreciate what they give to you. Praise the Lord. Teach your children to save. Teach your children to save. Amen? Teach your children to save. Because these teachings that you give them, you may wonder, what's, what, the, what does that have to do with uh, raising of godly children? Of course, if you don't teach them to say, the tendency is that when they grow up, you know, there will be people who spend anyhow, and at the end of the day, they will now be, you know, if care is not taken, such children will always end up stealing or doing some looking for some funny ways of getting money and the, of course the end of it will be hellfire that will not be the, the portion of your children in jesus name so these things are also relevant amen teach them about cleanliness amen again what has that got to do with raising godly children of course it's very important cleanliness is next to godliness Cle when the environment is dirty it attracts demons and when demons are attracted then you have ungodly children. So please teach them about godliness. Praise the Lord. Now I also want to talk about something else. I want to, I want to say to you children, say no. Say no to what? Say no to bad friends. Say no to bad friends. Say no to prostitution. Don't let somebody give you money so that they will sleep with you. Don't, don't allow anybody give you money to sleep with you. Don't sleep with anybody until you are married to the person. Amen? Say no to smoking. Don't smoke anything. It, it is a sin. Smoking is a sin. Say no to drug addiction. Say no. Some of you, maybe it's not the cocaine, the normal kind of drugs. It may be the ordinary drugs that you are taking, but it's like some of you get fond of this you're always swallowing. And I want to say to even the mommies out there and the teachers out there, some of you like taking too much drugs. It's a sin. When you get addicted to drugs, it becomes a sin. Amen? Children, say no to alcohol. You have no business. Eh, just a tip of alcohol in your, in, your, in, your, in your mouth is hellfire. It is a sin. Say no to alcohol. Don't even let people smoke around you. Don't let people drink alcohol around you. Say no. And children, say no to terror terrorism. Don't join those in terror groups. Don't join those carrying arms and am ammunition. Amen? Say no to Islam. Refuse to join any, any Muslim gathering. Refuse. Say no. Once they come, just quietly get out from their midst. Quietly walk away from their midst. Don't say anything to them. Just quietly walk away from them. If they are telling you, hey, come and join Islam, we'll give you money, we'll give you this, say no. Or in fact, don't even bother to say anything. Just quietly walk away and go and meet mommy and daddy and tell them what these people are telling you. Amen? Say no to any other religion. They are coming with, uh, come and join uh, Jehovah Witness. They are coming with, uh, uh, come and join Mormon. Come and join, say no. Amen? Say no to courts. Say no to courts. Don't join any courts. Say no to witchcraft. Refuse anybody who join who join witchcraft will not make heaven. Who join uh, uh, the witchcraft thing will not make heaven. Say no to witchcraft. If anybody is threatening you, go and tell mommy and daddy. And if you, you you can't tell mommy and daddy, please, my numbers are on the screen now. My numbers are on the screen. Call me. 
or look for your pastors or counselors. Look for trustworthy counselors or pastors. Amen. And speak to them. Tell them about the things you're going to, through. Say no to sex abuse. Some people will be, some of you girls, you see some men, you know, touching your bum bum, touching your breast, touching, touching, doing this to you. Say no. Once they do that to you, say no, stop it in Jesus' name. Always, when you are rebuking somebody, always put in Jesus' name. Tell the person, stop it in Jesus' name. Don't touch me like that and shout. Because if you just say, eh, don't touch me like that, the person will do it more. Don't, don't, don't touch my bum bum. The person will do it more. Shout. When the person, when you, when the person sees that you are shouting, he won't touch you again. You will, you will, in fact, the person will just run away for fear that somebody else should know. Please, anything that is evil, say no to all evils. Praise the Lord. It's very important. Please, say no to all those calls. Some of you, it's some of these um, social groups, like the Rotary Clubs. You don't, a Christian has no business whatsoever with the Rotary Club. A Christian has no business with Rotary Club. And most of these like a wine tapas uh, club and some of these ungodly clubs. Please say no to them. Praise the Lord. Please, it's very important to know that not everything is good. Good men don't always go to heaven. Not all good men go to heaven. The only way good men go to heaven is when they give their lives to Christ. Ask Cornelius. Ask Cornelius. Cornelius was a good man. He had all the certificates. He had the certificate of a very good man. But Cornelius was not qualified for heaven. Amen? Only born again men make heaven. Please, most of this, most of these social clubs, they have a deeper agenda you don't know. Most of these social clubs, they have a deeper agenda that you don't know. And heaven does not accept the excuse of I don't know. Heaven does not accept the excuse of I don't know. I didn't know that they, they have another agenda. Heaven will not accept it from you. So the best thing is to cut them off from your life. Those who don't know are in hellfire. Those who don't know, and that is the reason why I always ask parents and, 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 and teachers to please get the CDs for their, 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 their children. Most of the messages I'm preaching, I'm saying please get them because most of them comes by revelation. Praise the Lord. Ask Uzan, even if you have good intentions and they are contrary to heaven's laws, it can cause a man to end up in hell. Ask Uza about it. Uza had good intentions, but he had no knowledge. He didn't know. And what happened to Uza? He ended up in hell. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Say no to buying exam papers or expose. Say no to buying ex exam papers or expos. Say no to falsifying documents. You want, you, maybe you want to travel abroad, for instance, and then uh, they begin, begin to ask you for a document, and you know you don't have this document. You are not even qualified to have that document. Documents. Then you now want, want to go and falsify documents for these children. Please, children, don't do it. And parents, don't do it for your children. Because this will cause them to end up in hell if you do that. Don't go and be lying just because you want to travel or you want to get something from somewhere. Please stop these things. Say no to cheating at exams. Nobody should help you in exams and you should not help anybody in exams. Do I make myself clear? Children, do I make myself clear? Many children, their destiny have been cut short because they did what? They helped somebody in the exam. Some people have, been, have ended up in the prison yard for years. Some are there for more than 10 years now in prison because they helped somebody at the exam. And some because somebody helped them at the exam. Don't let anybody help you at the exams. And don't help anybody at exams. Don't go and be writing things in your, paper, in your pants at the ex exam halls. Don't go and be typing things. Some of you, 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 you wear computerized this words where you can type things. It's a C. Is a sin. All the sins is a sin. Don't do giraffe. Amen. Don't do giraffe in doing exams. I've told you, if you need help, tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me. I don't know this thing. And he will help you. 
I have seen that happen to me. Many times I do exams and all of a sudden it's like my brain. Nothing is there. But when I ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit help me. You just bring back to me. So please, learn to um, get the help of the Holy Spirit. No talking, doing exams. No phone calls, doing exams. Do I make myself clear? And parents, please know to force marriages for your children just because they want to go abroad or do whatever or get some papers. Say no. Amen. Say no to these co-houses. Say no to these co-houses. Amen. Because that is where evil spirits move most. All these disco houses. Because they are always in darkness and then they begin to shine, um, you know, put some light on you. You know, flash some light on you. And in the process, this, all these kind of settings, they invite demonic spirits into people. Please say no. Praise the Lord. And say no. And, and parents, please say no to late hours for your children, except for church service. Say no to late hours for your children, except for church services. I also want to say to, uh, 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 to parents, seek God's face concerning their careers. Seek God's face. Don't just say, oh, my child, uh, somebody is doing, uh, 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 this person is a doctor and he's making millions of naira. I want my children to be, uh, my, 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 my son, my daughter to be a, a doctor. No, 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 no. You don't do that. It's even a sin against God. To impose something that God has not ordained for them. Please seek God's face concerning the career of your children. Amen. It is ungodly to force them to do something they don't like. Don't allow them to do it. Sorry, if it is ungodly, if what they want to do is ungodly, then don't allow them to do it. If what they want to do, sometimes, you know, children, true, some children may not be making the right choice, then on such a case, you let them know that the choice that they, are, they want to embark on it's not from God and it is not godly. And so they will, you are not going to allow them to do it. Amen. Explain to them. It's very important. And prayerfully do it too. Amen. But if you are saying no out of pride, please give up your pride and seek God's counsel. Amen. Some of you, the reason why you are saying no, maybe the person, for instance, has been called... You know, to be a psalmist or a singer, singing for God. Children, don't sing worldly songs. It's a sin. Don't go and join worldly musicians. It's a sin. Those worldly musicians are not going to make heaven. I repeat myself. Worldly musicians will not make heaven. Don't go and be a worldly actor. Now I say to the parents, some of you, your children may, may choose to be a worship leader or a gospel singer. Don't say, ah, other people are doctors. You, you want to be a gospel singer. If that is what God has ordained for that child, please let them be. You are the one, in this case, to give up your ungodly pride. Amen? Put down your pride and let God's uh, 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 counsel stand. See God's face concerning their marriage because their marriage will make them or will destroy them and send them to hell. Their marriage will either make them, help them, and help them to make heaven, or will destroy them, mar them, and send them to hell. So it's very important for you parents and teachers to please seek the counsel of God concerning your children. Amen. Also, seek the counsel of God concerning where they want to live. Seek the counsel of God concerning where the ones to live. I heard about a story of a man who had an only son. The only son he had. The guy was abroad. And he asked, you know, this guy to come to uh, Nigeria. And when the guy came to Nigeria, he had to go through the youth service. And 
you know, it was the days, it's, um, they, they now posted him to all those places where they have Boko Harams. I mean, it is not by force that your child must do youth service. If they are posting your child to, so for instance, Sambisa Forest, and you go and ask God, God, should I allow my child to go to Sambisa Forest? And God says, no, please don't let your child go. Because that's where the Boko Harams mainly are. Amen? So please, don't seek God's face concerning where your children are going to stay. Anyway, concerning this child, this man's only son ended up in the north, northern Nigeria, and he was killed. The only son this man had was killed by Boko Haram people. Amen. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said amen. This man's only son was killed by Boko Haram. It was a terrible thing. But that one of the mistakes this man did was not asking God, God, should I let my son go to northern Nigeria? Please, ask God. Wherever your children are going to stay, ask God. Seek God's face. A, 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 a woman was told if she allows her son to travel to a particular place abroad, that she will never see this child again. That's in that, in, in that this that a, a man of God was telling a particular woman, your child, if you allow him to go abroad, you will never see your son again because he will eventually be killed abroad. Let him go to, I think he said somewhere in, I can't remember whether it's Abuja, I can't remember, somewhere in Nigeria. Let him go and do his business there and he will make it. And when this child heard, he was very, very annoyed because he had bought his ticket and everything and was about traveling. But this man of God told the mother, don't allow him to go abroad. Tell him to go to this part of the nation in Nigeria. And after a lot of struggle, this child eventually went there. And years later, the child was so happy that he went to this part because he became, he began to make millions of naira in that part of Nigeria he went to. He was so sad, so happy, he became a success. He was so happy because he listened to the man of God's advice. So please seek the God, seek the face of God concerning where your children are traveling to. Seek the face of God for the remolding or change to godly characters. Seek the face of God concerning their remolding. In other words, if they are bad, they have bad characters, seek the face of God so that God will remold them into godly characters or to change them into godly characters. Seek the face of God against the failures in, in their life. Sometimes you, you say, ah, this child, is, you, are, you, you just get unnecessarily angry with this child. This child is failing. He always failing. You, uh, your mates, your mates are, are, are having AIDS. Your mates are passing. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are bringing their, 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 their first and second in their class. You, you are always the last. You, you are failing. Please find out why this child is failing. Some of, some of the reasons may be demonic reasons. It may be somebody has done something against this child. And that's why the child is failing. And that's why I say to you children, stop allowing people to play with your head or touch your head. Don't allow people. Anybody touch, if anybody touches your head, remove the person's head. Say, please don't touch my head in Jesus' name. Please, mommy, sir, don't touch my head in Jesus' name. Okay? It's very important because some people rub children's head and by so doing they use time to collect their brains sometimes it may not even be this it may be that this child is faced with one problem or the other amen so please seek the face of god concerning why your child is going through maybe your child is being threatened by somebody for instance and this person is causing him fears so instead of your child concentrating on his books he may be consumed with the fear of this person. Praise the Lord. So please seek the face of God concerning why they are failing. Also seek the face of God concerning who you are leaving your children with. As a matter of fact, about three days ago, God, you know, when I was thinking, oh God, what, what am I going to say in the next um, National Teachers Training Conference that is coming up? What am I going to tell them? 
that very day, the Lord gave me a dream. It was the story of, um, it's, it's about a lady who left her, her son for this other young woman to stay with. And then this young woman, this other woman abused the son sexually. In other words, this young, this other woman began to sleep with the son, began to have sex with the son. And this son was around 8 to 10 years old that I saw in that dream. And then in that dream, I saw that this 8 to 10 years old was now wearing neck pain as a result of disease. I don't know, I don't know what kind, in that, in that dream, they call the name of the disease, but by the time I woke up, I forgot the name. But this son now had a, a disease. And, it, you know, I rebuked the lady, I was so angry, I rebuked the lady, that how can you be sleeping with this small, you know, this little boy? And she was saying, she said something like, it's the devil. I'm sorry, it's the devil, something like that. I can't remember exactly what, but I knew the Lord was giving me that revelation. Because he wants to send home a message to you teachers, to you parents out there. Please seek God's counsel concerning those you are leaving your children with. I've said it in my other videos. A lot of children have been abused sexually by their uncles, their aunties, their... I don't know. Find out who you are leaving your children with. Also, seek God's um, counsel concerning the ungodly dreams your children are having. And that's why it's so important, like I said in the other videos, find out the dreams your children are having. It's very, very important. Also, praise the Lord. So, try and find out a lot of things your children are getting in, involved with. Please, these things are extremely, very, very important. Praise the Lord. Now, some do's that you need to know concerning your children. Some do's that you need to know concerning your children. Do your children hate your work? Do, do your children hate the work that you do? Please find out why they hate your work. The reason why some children hate their parents' work is because their, their parents are into prostitution. Maybe that's, if that, that is the case, you must stop that kind of work. You must stop because what you are doing, if you don't stop, that means you want to take those children to hell because your children will learn what you are doing. It will not be their portion in Jesus' name. The reason why they may hate the work you are doing is, you, is that you may be into beer parlor. Please, no Christian person must have a beer parlor. If you have a beer parlor, you're on your way to hellfire. If you are selling alcohol, you are on your way to hellfire. So the reason why your children may hate your work is because you are into beer parlor. Or maybe you are a herbalist, a juju man, a charmer. Children hate such things. They don't want their parents to be in, into such things because they know it's not godly. They know God doesn't like such things. Or maybe you are the one, parents begging all over the place. You see some parents, they will be begging from here to here. Some parents are so lazy. The time in which, the time which you, in which, which you use in begging around the whole, whole nation. Why don't you use it to sell something? You can sell pure water. You can sell, you know, look for something to sell and make money and stop begging. It's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's something very, very disgusting when you see people begging all over the place. Please. So, if you find that your children don't like your work, please find out the reason why they don't like your work. However, some children may not like the work their parents are doing for pride's sake. For instance, those who uh, maybe you carry load in the market to make money. If that is your position, please don't mind your children if they say they don't like it. Some people, you know, they do dirty jobs. Dirt in the sense that maybe they are the one cleaning toilets, uh, cleaning the septic tanks and things like that, and the children don't like it. Please don't listen to those children. What you should rather do is ask God to help you with what you are doing 
or to give you another job to do. So that means it's your children who are prideful and not you. Amen. But even then, you can still ask God to lift you up. Amen. Concerning the work that you are doing. Praise the Lord. Seek the face of God. Amen. I also want to say to, uh, to parents who are involved in every evil work, please, for the sake of the student, get out of those dirty jobs you are doing. You are an arm robber. You are a thief. You are a 419. You are a prostitute. You are a herbalist. You are a beer parlor person selling alcohol. Please get out of out of those kind of businesses. Amen. Get out for the sake of this children. We saw what happened to Evans. The kidnapper and arm robber. It's so sad. It's so sad. Even his children's face be on the newspapers. I said to you children, if your children are doing, if your parents are doing any of this evil work, please begin to speak to them. Begin to speak to them. Even if you are four years old, Go to mommy, to daddy, and say, mommy, daddy, please. Before you do this, first pray to God. And say, God, please, I want you to stop this work my parents, they are doing. And then you say to God, God, give me the grace to speak to my parents. And let them accept, you know, what I'm telling them. So after you have prayed to God, you now go to your parents. Mommy, please, I want to talk to you in the name of Jesus. Please, daddy. I don't like this job that you are doing. Please look for another job. The Lord will give you another job. Pray to God to give you another job and he will give it to you. Say it nicely. Say it gently. Don't... Mommy! This job you are doing is not... Ah, no. That's sin. That's disrespecting your parents. God doesn't want us to disrespect our parents. But say it gently. Say it quietly. And don't say it in the presence of people. Say it when you people are inside the house. Not in the presence. Don't go and... Tell them where yeah, they are people, they will beat you. Okay? So learn to be what? Wise. Apply wisdom. Praise the Lord. Do you make do you make only your girls do the domestic work and you don't make your boys get involved? If you do that, that means you want to leave your boys for destruction. Some of you teach your girls how to cook, but you don't teach the boys how to cook. Let me tell you. You are setting them up for destruction. You may say, what, the, what does ha that has to do with raising up godly children? Of course, if you don't teach your children to cook, what will happen? God forbid, when they want to marry, they will now marry because the girl can cook, not because she's a godly girl. And this may lead them to hell eventually. So please, teach them to be reliable. Teach your children to be reliable. Teach them about domestic affairs. It's very, very important. Praise the Lord. Do you reveal the spouse, your, your spouse secrets to your children? Please, if you're the one doing this, stop it. Don't be revealing your spouse problem to your children. It is ungodly. Oh, come and see. Hey, you, do you know that your father used to beat me every day? Do you know that your mother was a prostitute before I married her? Please! Don't do this to the children. Because when you begin to do this, the children begin to have hate for that person you are speaking about. And with this hate, it will send them to hellfire. So you don't want to do this. If, if you don't want your children to start having bitterness and hatred in their mind, a lot of children have ended up in prison yard because they hate their mommies, they hate their fathers, and they beat up their fathers whom they hate, or beat up their mothers whom they hate. Some have even killed their fathers and killed their mothers whom they hate. So please, praise the Lord. Don't let the children end up in the prison or end up in hell. Many children have been corrupted by their, their parents, especially their mothers. And so I've ended up hating their parents whose evil has been told to them. Many children have ended up beating up or killing their fathers, especially, especially, and so leaving them feeling guilty forever. Their life is turned upside down into a turmoil, locked up in prison for years and locked out of their destiny or unable to fulfill destiny. And when even some come out of the prisons, they become 
another nuisance. They become people who are not acceptable because people begin to fear them. The society fear them that if this child has done this before, this child can repeat it again. So even when the child does not do such things again, <laughs> the society still will not accept such a person. So please, don't let them end up in prison. Praise the Lord. Don't let, become, don't let your children become outlaws. Do your children have freedom of speech? Please, let them, your children have freedom of speech. That is not to say that they can speak anyhow to you. That is not to say that they can speak at any time. Children, learn when to speak to your elders. Learn to know when it is the right time to speak to your mommies, your daddies, your teachers, or whoever. There is a right time to speak. When you have something like a secret that you want to share, it is not when people are around your parents or when your parents are busy cooking that you begin to tell them or doing something very, they are very, very busy. Learn to find the right time to share with your parents or whoever. Amen? And please, parents, teachers, give your children freedom. If you don't give them the freedom to speak, then when they have issues, they will not tell you. When they have issues, they will not tell you. I heard a story about a guy whom his parents, you know, kept with another woman. And this woman forced this child to accept food. And this, through this food, this, this, this boy became a witch, a wizard. And this guy didn't like the fact that he was a wizard. He wanted to tell his parents, but anytime he wants to talk to daddy, daddy says, I'm busy. Anytime he wants to talk to mommy, mommy says, I'm busy. And so even this, the, this, this other woman began to use this child to afflict the parents, to punish the parents. And because the, 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 the parents refused, him, you know, will not give him time, to speak. So he continued to do more evil. But even apart from that, there are parents, there are some parents who tell their, their children, keep short. I don't want to hear anything you are saying. That is not right. If your child has something to say, please, tell your child to say it out. But to say it in a nice and respectful way. It's very important. Praise the Lord. Now, do you use foul language on your children? Or do you curse them? Do you use foul language on your children or do you curse them? Please, I want to say this to parents. Don't curse your children. And don't use foul language on them. Don't use foul language on them. I heard a story about a, 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 a child who um, the, the, you know, they just came from abroad and um, she doesn't really hear Yoruba and then the mother used to say and the child did not understand what means so he went to the pastor and asked what does Oriyatikbabode means what does Oriyatikbabode means and the, the pastor told him Oriyatikbabode means your head has accepted witchcraft and guess what the words of the mother finally came to pass. That child died. That is what, you know, how powerful words can be. So I, I beg you parents and you teachers, mind the words that you speak. Mind the words that you speak. Mind the things that you say to the children. Even, even cursing other people around your children is wrong. In fact, you must never curse anybody. You must never say foul language. Some of you still use the F language. Christians, the any Christian still using the F language is what? On his way or her way to hell. Stop using the foul language. Mind the things that you say around your children. Mind the words that you speak to them. i tell you another story. Which pastor? The first story I told you is a story... Um, 
Pastor Olukoya, you know, shared with his congregation. While the second story is a story Pastor Iadebo e. shared with his own congregation too. He told um, us about um, the story of a boy, a, a woman with the only child, a boy. And this, this woman was very, very poor. Very, very poor. But as poor as this woman was, in fact, one of the poorest person in that uh, 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 village, she did everything. She sold all her clothes. She sold everything. She would go and cut down woods, sell woods, do everything so that just so that she can, you know, train this boy. And she began to succeed in training this boy, you know, with everything that she has. Then one day, this, they didn't have food to eat. And then she had to sell some clothes just so that they can buy pepe. And after buying the pepe, he asked the, the boy to go and grind, blend the pepe. And the boy carried the pepe and went to blend the pepe. On his way back, he saw some people. He saw some people who were um, playing football, some children playing football. And he decided to stand where these boys were playing football. And the next thing, they hit, they, 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 they kicked the football towards the pepper that he was carrying. And that was how they threw away the pepper on his head. This boy cried. He cried. He cried. He cried. Because that was the last money in his mother's hand that they used in buying that pepper. They bought that pepper so that they can have something to eat. And now this pepper has been thrown away. And this guy, for fear, he could not go and tell the mother, mother, see what has happened. Please, I want to say to you parents, don't build up your children with so much fear for you. Don't make your children so much afraid of you that they cannot speak. It's a bad thing so that when they are in trouble, they don't hide it from you. Because of this, this boy refused to go home till very much late in the night. The mother looked for him all over. He didn't see him. It was much later in the night. He went home crying. And when finally his mother will ask, what, where is the pepper? He now explained that they have thrown away the pepper. Those playing football have thrown away the pepper. Pepper. Guess what that, what that mother will say? The mother said to the boy, the way they threw away this pepper, the only pepper that she, not me, wants to eat, that is the way they will throw away the life of, I don't want to say you. That is the way they will throw away, okay. It's, it's, she said to the boy, that is the way they will throw away your life when you are about to succeed. The way they throw away this paper is the way they will throw away your life when you are about to succeed. That was what a mother said to her only son. Guess what? The mother was not really a witch. But you see, those words is enough witchcraft. It is not until you fly that you are a witch. The words of your mouth can say whether you are a witch or not. But guess what? There are other witches. There are other confound confirmed witches in the villages and they heard the word of the mothers and they stamped it and said so shall it be so guess what this mother after beating that boy left him she continued the struggling struggling to you know train this child finally the child graduated finally sold everything she has and sent this boy abroad the boy went abroad became a big man abroad and even began to send money to his village to help in uh, community development. And finally, the boy decided to return home. After he had really succeeded, he decided to return home. And he came by ship. You know, those days, they hardly come by flight. So he came by ship, which was cheaper. Came by the ship. And then they finally got to somewhere close to their village by ship. And you know, the whole village, they went because the boy has been good sending, sending them help even for the community. So they went to welcome this boy. And the mother was full of rejoicing. 
And the guy, this man, as he wanted to come down from the ship, seeing his mother, he was full of joy. And as he was saying, just about to run down the steps, that was how this guy fell into the sea. And the mother began to, began to scream. The mother screamed. And the whole community began to look for this boy in the, in the sea. They could not find him. Guess what? The mother refused to leave the seaside. She began, you know, insanity entered into her. Immediately, insanity took hold of this woman. She became mad immediately. And then the next thing she began to do. And according to Pastor Adeboye, they said from that day till even the day, I think years later, when he went back to that village, that is what the mother was still doing. What was she doing? She was using, uh, uh, um, what's it called, pan to take water from the sea. Why was she doing that? She was hoping that one day she will finish, you know, removing the water from the sea and she will find her child. But is that possible? Can anybody bail out the water from the sea? It is not possible. That was insanity that took hold of her. So because of that, the youths in the village, they decided to do the findings to know which witches caused this. And by the time they brought out, out of the, all the witches that they had suspected, all the people they suspected to be witches, and began to harass them, these witches were now the one that said, look, it is not us, so we are not the one in charge of this thing. We are not the one that caused this horror to this boy. We are not the one that killed him. It is the words of his mother that killed him. So that was how they found out that it was the mother's words. That all they did was, they said, as the mother had said, so shall it be. Mothers, fathers, teachers, hear this. The words are hearing. The words that you are speaking to those children. Mind the words you use on your children. Say the right thing. Please, don't send those children to hell in Jesus' name. And children, please stop cursing. Anybody who curses cannot make heaven. Anybody who says dirty words cannot make heaven. Don't use dirty words. Don't use evil words. Mind your words. Mind your tongues. Do you hate or dislike people? Do your children hate or dislike people around them? Please find out why they hate or dislike people around them. Children may have a reason why they hate or dislike people around them. Amen. They may have a, a solid reason why they hate or dislike people around them. Then I also some don'ts for you, for you parents. Don't abuse your children physically or mentally. How can you abuse your children when you beat them anyhow? That's physically. That's a physical abuse. You beat them anyhow. That's physical. That's, that's an abuse physically. Please, it is ungodly. When that child does something wrong, sit that child down, speak to the child and say, look at what you have done. Open the Bible where it is written that that thing is wrong and let that child know that he or she is wrong and tell that child to repent from that thing and then spank that child. Beat him or her on the bum bum, not on his face, not on his head, not on, you know, any other part of the body, but what? On his or her bum bum. And the beating should not be too much. I see some parents go as far as, you know, whipping their children more than 10 times. Ha! You want to kill this child? Let me tell you something. If you kill that child, you are going to the prison. Many people have ended up in prison after beating their children. So please, be very careful. Be very, very careful. There are, so some parents, I, 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 I heard a story of a, a, a man who padlocked the child, the, the mouth of his child, his son, just because now he has another girlfriend. And I say to you parents, mothers, if for any reason you are leaving your husband, don't leave your children behind. If for any reason you are leaving your husband, don't leave your children behind. Except if you are very sure that man 
will train those children well. But why should you even leave? Why should you leave that man? Instead of leaving that man, please pray to God to bring back peace in that marriage. Or do that marriage the way you want it. Praise the Lord. Don't let me waste time there. Then some, there is also what we call the mental abuse. Some parents, teachers, they abuse their children mentally. How can you abuse your children mentally? When you say, see you, coconut head. You don't know anything. You are a failure. You are stupid. You idiot. That's what mental abuse. We should not do it. Amen? Beating should be as moderate as possible. Not too much or too hard. The word in the Bible is Cain, not iron. Amen? Don't be quick to beat as much as possible. Avoid beating. But warn them seriously. If you have to beat, let it be once in a while. And show them why you are beating them. And let them read it from the, from the, from the Bible. Which says you should spare the, should spare, spare the rod and spoil the child. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then I also want to say, don't allow people to beat your children. Don't allow people. Don't give people the right to beat your children. Because a lot of people have allowed others to beat their children and they have wounded those children or caused serious damages to those children. Amen. I heard a story about, there was a story about um, this lady. Okay, let's leave that for now. Another thing I want to say is don't, you know, complain about your children to ungodly people. Don't complain about your children to ungodly people so that they don't give you ungodly advice. Sometimes you go and complain to ungodly people and they'll say, go and drop the, the nonsense child with his father or with your grandmothers at home. The grandmother you don't know whether he's a witch or not. Many people have taken their children to grandmothers and grandfathers that have, end, that have made them witches and wizards. Please! And there was also this case about this woman who complained so much about her child to this you know, other woman. And this woman says, look, let me help you to train. Let me teach your child a lesson for you so that she'll, she'll be a good person. And that one said, okay, yes, teach her. Teach, you know, teach her for me. Teach her a lesson for me. And you know what the woman did? The woman blocked the destiny, used her witchcraft to block the destiny of that child. Stopped her from marrying, stopped her from having children, and so many other damages she caused in the life of that child. It was so many years later, they found out she was the one behind all the troubles this child was going through. And when they asked her, why did you do this? She now said, it is the mother that said I should teach her a lesson. So I'm teaching her a lesson. So please, be aware of who you, you talk to about your children. Praise the Lord. Now, if your child is stealing, please don't let the world know that your child is stealing. Amen. Of course, wherever your child steals, please beat your child openly in the presence of those. From if your child steals, beat your child in the presence of those whom your child steals from, not where your child did not steal from. If and then those who don't know your child is stealing, please don't go and be telling them your child is a thief. Like you know, in church one day, a parent said said you know they were asking for advice concerning uh, what should you do if your child steals. And then this parent said, I will go and tell the teachers to tell the school that uh, the parents should go and tell the teachers to tell the whole school that her child steals. I said, you dare not do that. If you do that, you kill the morale of this child. And if, the, if care is not even taken, that child can commit suicide. Don't ever do such a thing. When your children are doing the wrong things, take them inside and rebuke them and beat them if necessary. Not the physical abuse, but 
the moderate beating. Amen? Please, teachers and parents, the one, don't let the world know. Parents, so that you don't kill them morally and also destroy them. Amen? Some people, some children have died because of the way the disgrace their parents brought to them. And then, you know, the danger about it is that a child may be stealing today and then tomorrow he stops. But when, guess what? If you have gone to tell the school or whoever, your child is a thief. Even when that child has stopped stealing, any time there is any stealing around, they will say it's your child when it's not your child. So that is another great danger. So please don't do that. Then don't force them to do what they don't like. I have said it before, ask God. Ask God. Then some of the never. Never call them a failure. Never you call your child a failure. Rather, you should do what? Encourage them. And children, you too, don't call people failures. Don't call them a lodo. Don't call other children a lodo. Rather, what you should do is what? Encourage them. Tell them, go and talk to God. You can make it. You can be a big man. You can be a big woman. You can make it. Amen? Never discriminate or love one child more than the other. And again, I also say to children, don't discriminate. Love everybody equally. Don't say, eh, this one is, is my, from, my, from my tribe. This one is not from my tribe. Mm -mm. And I say to you parents, don't say you love, this, you, 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 you love this child more and you don't love this child more. And you let, don't let children know that you love one more than the others. Don't let them know. Because this thing can bring bad blood. And it can cause the child that is not being well loved to hate the other child and eventually kill the child. So you don't want trouble for that child. Don't show, even if you love one more than the others, let it be in your heart. Don't let them know. Treat them equally. Amen? Treat those children equally. Same thing for you children. Love everybody. Amen? Love everybody. Praise the Lord. Let them know it pays to work hard. Let children know it pays to work hard. Children, those who work hard will always end up well. Ch children who work hard will always win, end up well. So teach your children to read their books and to learn, amen, to work with their hands. And when I'm talking about working hard, I'm talking about working hard or laboring, either working for God or, in, or doing ministry for God, or even in the secular, working in the secular. Praise the Lord. Then I also want to say to parents, appreciate your children when they do good things. Appreciate them. Encourage them. Let them know, oh, you're a wonderful child. Amen? Let them know, oh, my child, I'm happy to be your mother. I'm happy to be your mother, father. Tell them they are the best children in the whole world. Amen. Tell them they can be better than this. The way this with this mark, even though you've gotten 40 now, I know you can make 70, 80. Tell them. Amen. Even though maybe that, that particular, particular time they've not done the best. Tell them. Even for the little they've done, appreciate them. Praise the Lord. Speak great of them. Sing them a song of appreciation or write them a poem of appreciation. Tell them they are great. Tell them they are the best. Tell them you are so blessed to have them as your children. Tell them I'm proud you are my child. Pray for them. It will boost their spiritual and moral ego and make them to do better and greater works. Praise the Lord. And of course, children need to learn to appreciate mommy and daddy for every good thing they do to you. Learn to appreciate your teachers. Learn to appreciate even the children around you. When children do good to you, say, God bless you. Thank you for doing this. You are a great friend. You are a good person. Amen? Um, let them know it's space to be trustworthy or faithful. Children, it is good to be tr a trustworthy. Let people be able to trust you. Be a faithful person that God can rely on, your parents can rely on. If they, 
for instance, if they give you money to keep, you should not eat that money. Nobody should come to you and say, ah, give me the money mommy has given to you. Give me the money this person has given you. Even your mommy should not take, if your friend has given you money. Your mommy should not come and say, give me the money your friend has taken, uh, given to you. No, you say, mommy, please, don't do this. God doesn't like this. It is my friend that has given me this money. I can't give it to you. Mommy, I'm sorry, I can't give it to you. That is a faithful person, a trustworthy person. Praise the Lord. Let them learn some work, some handiwork. Let them learn. Apart from, you know, whatever education they are into, let them also learn some handiwork like tailoring, carpentry, electricals, you know, or mechanicals. Let them learn something so that in case they finish school, and they can't find a job immediately, they can also be doing something. Even if they are doing one work, it doesn't prevent them still doing something at home. At home, instead of, you know, paying whoever to come and do some jobs at home, they can also do it. And that will help to save them a lot of money. Check their books from time to that time. Find out what, you know, they are doing in school. So that it will not be that your child is just going to waste your money. Amen. Find out about his marks so that when his marks are going down, find out why his marks are going down or her marks are going down or her scores. Praise the Lord. Then um, always let them know you love them. Always let your children know you love them. If you don't tell them you love them, somebody else will. Amen. Say it to them. Don't hide it. Show it to them. It will build them up. Hug them from time to time or shake them. If they are if they are the opposite, if they are the opposite sex in their teens. Of course, that means that you learn if you are if you are if, if you are a father and your daughter is already a teenager with breast, you know you don't hug your teenage daughters anymore. You don't do that. Shake their hands, okay? Praise the Lord. It's very important so that Satan does not begin to give your child the wrong ideas. Ah, it's like well, daddy loves me, daddy wants to have sex with me, or you know, praise the Lord. It's not a portion in Jesus' name. And please, I, I also want to say this it's so important that we show our children love. If we don't show them, Somebody else will come to tell you, tell them, I love you. And usually, Satan always sends people to tell your children, to, to tell children he loves them, when in truth he actually hates them. If you don't tell them you love them, when the devil does, they will think it is true that Satan really loves them or that demonic agent really loves them and they will fall for the devil. And that could end up in their destruction. I give you an example of something that happened. And this is also to show that it is good to tell people to appreciate and to love people that are worth loving. There was this story of this girl who was in my former church. Not a girl, really. She's a little bit, maybe then she was like in her 30s. And then I didn't know it was God that was speaking through my mind. But what came up in my spirit was, I love you. And I was like, what's that? I, was saying, I said to myself, what's that? I didn't know it was God that was saying, what, that, that wanted to say to the other lady, I love you. So when I heard I love you in my spirit, I felt I was the one talking to myself, or that I was the one that wanted to talk to that lady, so I decided to restrain myself. And I was like, moreover, this lady is older than me. Why should I be telling her? I love you, you know? Why should I be telling her I love you? She, she may now begin to, you know, look down on me that I don't have respect. You know, some people, I don't know their mentality, their mentality can be so low. When somebody who's younger tells them I love you, they think that person is being disrespectful, you know? So I, I try to withdraw from saying what I felt in my spirit, like saying to this lady, guess what? We went in for the next program that we have at the church 
because we came from a, a, a program that day. We went in for the program. And, you know, it kept disturbing me to go and say to this lady, I love you. But I said to myself, okay, after the break time, I'll go and tell her, I love you. Guess what? I think it was at the end of the service. I now decided to go and look for this lady to tell her, I love you. Guess what? I couldn't find this lady. And other services later, I couldn't find her. Days, weeks, I didn't find this lady. Finally, I think it was maybe a month or more, I now finally saw her. I now said, hey, where have you been? And she said to me, do you know what? Do you know that day you saw me last? I was feeling very lonely. I felt nobody loves me. And because of that, a guy came and told me he loves me. And because the guy told me he loves me, I went home with this guy. And after going home with this guy, I found out that this guy doesn't love me. This guy only wants to have sex with me. And this guy has been having sex with me since then. And my heart got broken. This guy messed me up, made a mess of me. She said she now had to leave this guy because this guy really broke her heart. This guy caused her so much pain. So she left that guy and came back. That was the reason why she came back to church. So I felt so bad because I now realized that it was God that wanted me to say to that lady that day, I love you. And if I had said to that day, if I had told that lady, I love you or God loves you, it would have healed her broken heart. It would have healed her, her mind that was feeling empty, that nobody loves her. She was feeling unloved. She was feeling nobody loves her. If I had told her that, it would have been a great deal. Amen? It would, it would have changed her life. That guy would not have been able to come into her life and deceive her that he loves her, whereas in actual fact, all he wanted was to have sex with her. Amen? So can you see how powerful it is to tell people, I love you? However, if you are a boy, don't go and say to a girl, I love you, because... The person may misunderstand you. Rather what you say is, Jesus loves you and I love you with the love of God. God loves you and I love you with the love of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't go and say to the opposite sex, I love you. Amen. So that they don't misunderstand you. Praise the Lord. i also give you another story. Amen. Oh. The story has jumped out of my mind now. Don't worry. Maybe I'll come to it later. Praise the Lord. So always tell them you love them when necessary. Also rebuke and correct them when they steal, they misbehave, when they fight, etc. Rebuke them sharply. Let them know this is wrong. These things are very, very important. If we are going to have, if we are going to raise up children who will make heaven eventually. Amen. Encourage them to join church groups. Encourage them to join church groups and to make friends with godly children. Amen. Encourage them to make friends with godly children. And of course, through these godly children, maybe one day they will find godly spouse among them. Praise the Lord. And I also want to advise parents, once you are both 50, 60, please, share your inheritance even while you are alive i i encourage you to share your inheritance among your children even when you are alive because most people they wait till they tell the lawyers to share their inheritance after their death and i have noticed that this has caused a lot of troubles or maybe one of the children just hijack the wheel and you know turn it upside down in such a way that that will favor him or her. So please, it's advisable for parents to divide their will when they are alive. Let everybody know this is your portion so that after your death, they will not be fighting over nothing. I don't know, many, many families are always divided after the death of their parents. It shouldn't be so. Praise the Lord. I have so much to still say, but I think I'm going to close with this. Amen. I'm going to close here. Please, above all, let them know Jesus Christ is coming back again. Will you be ready when the Lord 
shall come. Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Oh, I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. Oh, I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. Children, you want to give your life to Christ? If you want to give your life to Christ, you want to make sure that you make heaven, you want to be a heavenly bound children, I want you to say these prayers now. Say after me. Father, forgive me my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Father, have mercy on me. Deliver me from every wickedness. Wipe away my sins with the blood of Jesus. Today, I break every agreement I have made with the devil knowingly or knowingly in the name of Jesus in Jesus name I declare Jesus is my Lord and my Savior Jesus come into my heart Jesus come into my heart Father write my name in the Lamb's book in Jesus book of life Holy Spirit help me to make heaven in Jesus name thank you Father thank you Jesus Thank you, Holy Spirit.